Hi there. In this video I'm going to show you how to use web components in your React project. The application that we're going to build is a simple CRUD application with form for filling in first name and last name, a button for adding, and then we'll display the added people in a data grid. The web components that we're going to use are from the Vaadin uh, component set. This is an open source Apache license set of components. We're going to use the text field, the button, and the data grid. Here on the website you can get live examples and API documentation and we'll come back to this in, in just a while to see how, how to use the grid. In this demo I'm going to use the create react app script for generating a project. Okay with the project created let's go into the directory. Before we start installing the web components uh, we're going to install a polyfill that enables uh, web components to be used in older browsers as well. These days most modern browsers already ship with support for web components but it's always nice to be able to support older browsers as well. So I will install the polyfills and uh, vendor copy tool which will allow us to copy them over into our uh, folder. With those installed I'm going to open this folder in my editor which is VS Code. And here we will start by defining the copying of the of the polyfills into our into our folder. So here in the scripts, we'll add one more script for post install, and post install will be vendor copy. And then we'll define the vendor copy down here. So what we want to copy over, the first thing we want to copy over is the custom elements ES5 adapter for any browsers that don't support ES6 or rather if you have uh, transpiled your code into ES5. And the second thing is this polyfill bundle. Okay, so now that we have that in here, the next time we run npm install, uh, those things will get copied over into our public vendor folder. Okay, you can see that they are now in here. We can go ahead and close this, open up our index file, and go ahead and use those. So up in the head, I'm going to add a script. So the first script that we load here is the Web Components Polyfill Bundle. After that, we load the Custom Elements ES5 adapter if needed. You can go ahead and close the index file and open up a terminal and run npm start which should start our dev server okay we can see that our application has launched let's open up the dev tools here and go to the network tab refresh and just validate that the web components bundle did successfully get loaded all right so with the polyfills taken care of we are now ready to actually start using components. In order to use the components uh, we need to install them first. So we'll close the dev server here for a second and install uh, the text field, the button, and the grid through npm. Okay, those are installed. Let's go into our app.js here and we can go ahead and remove stuff that we're not going to use. So I'll remove everything except for this outermost div here. And in order to make these components usable, we first need to import them, like that. Now we're ready to start using them here in our render method. The first thing that we're going to create is a div with a class name form. Inside the form, we will create two text fields and a button. For the text field, we will define a label, which will be the input prompt, and a ref, which we'll need in order to reference this uh, element later on. Duplicate the line, do the same thing for last name, and then add a button. 
and give this a ref so we can reference it later on. Okay, so that takes care of the form. The next thing that we want to add is the grid. Like for the other components, we'll give this a ref so we can reference it. And then we need to define how the column should map to our data. So for that, we can go back into the vine.com website and look at one of the examples here. The example is also deal with names, so we're actually able to copy paste these first two columns. And what you'll see here is that the column has a path attribute that tells Vine Grid how to map between the objects that we bind here to the column. So in our case, we'll have two properties on our data object, first name and last name, like that. Now this is a little bit different from using normal React components because of the way how React uh, deals with events and how it does data binding. So we're not able to pass in data the same way as we would with normal React components. So we're also not able to listen to events the same way. That's why we had to add these references here and we'll take a look at how we can use those to hook up the functionality. We'll implement the component did mount callback. In here, the first thing that I want to define is a list of people. It will be an empty array first off. Then I'm going to add a listener on the button for click events. Uh, I'm able to get hold of that through this.refs. And there I can use the ref name that I defined up here. So this.refs.addButton.addEventListener. We're listening for the click event. And when somebody clicks on this, what we want to do is essentially update the people array, including a new person with the information from, from these text fields. So we'll call people equal to a new array with all the people from before, and then a new object with first name equal to this dot refs dot first name dot value and then the same thing for last name change that to last once we've updated the array what we want to do is bind that to the grid so this dot refs.grid dot items so items is the property that we want to set and we set that to the people array after that we can go ahead and clear out the first name and last name fields and just set the values to to an empty string okay then we'll start up the dev server again. All right, we can see our application is here. The CSS looks a little wonky, so let's fix that. Be in the app CSS here. It's essentially, we can pretty much remove all of this and then what we'll put in is for the app, we'll add a little bit of padding, so four pixels, and then for the for the form, or actually for any anything inside the form, we'll add add some spacing. So we'll do that with a margin right. Let's put that to four pixels as well. We'll save that. Go back into our application. Looks a little bit nicer now. All right, so let's try this out. Hmm. All right, so it works partially cleared those out. So it's probably something with the item binding. Yes, so we'll 
supposed to be items, not item. So we'll update that, try it again, and yes, now it works. So that is how you use web components in a React project. You can see that using components is a little bit different from using native React components because of how React deals with uh, event handling and with data binding. There's a good site called Custom Elements Everywhere that lists all the kind of gotchas when using web components in React projects. There's also a project called Preact, which has much better support for web components and is has a React compatible API if you want to try that out. All right, thanks for watching.